This is Advanced Algebra Lesson 6-6, fitting a quadratic model to data. We're going to explore quadratic regression. It fits a model of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c to data. To get a specific model for the data, we need to solve for three unknowns, a, b, and c. Quadratic regression is like linear regression in that it finds the model with the least sum of squares of differences from the given data points to the values predicted by the model. And remember, as we studied in, in Chapter 3 when we were looking at linear regression, this will not f be a perfect fit for our data. It's just a model. The first method we're going to use is, is doing it by hand. And we, as stated above, we need to solve for a, b, and c. And if we know three or more points that are on our parabola, we can do this. We're going to solve, we're going to basically create a system. And if we have three variables that we need to solve for, that means we're going to need three equations in our system. So we need to have at least three points on our parabola in order to find a model for this parabola. So first of all, we're going to substitute each ordered pair into y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So you need three pairs. We're going to write the result of that step one as a system of three equations. We'll solve the system. So then when we solve the system, we'll know values for a, b, and c. So we'll use the solution of the system to write an equation for our parabola, and then we can check it using our three given points. So we're going to take a look at the parabola that contains the points negative 1, 8, 1, 2, and 3, 4. And so first thing we're going to do is substitute each ordered pair. So as, as you can see, I've taken negative 1 and inserted it in place of x, and I've taken 8 and inserted it in place of y. Done the same thing with the point 1, 2, my 1's in place of x, and my 2 in place of y, and I did that for 3 in place of x and 4 in place of y for that next one. Let me simplify this. So if I take a negative 1 squared, that gives me 1a, and a negative 1 times b and plus c would equal 8. 1 squared is 1, and I have a 1 here, so that makes my equation 2 equals 1a plus 1b plus c. And then if I go down to the bottom one, 4 will equal 3 squared, which is 9, a plus b times 3 plus c. So as you can see here, I have my system. And we're going to solve my system. I know that a, b, c will equal, and then if I use my matrices, 1, 1, 9, negative 1, 1, 3, 1, 1, 1, to the power of negative 1. So I'm going to take its inverse times my constant matrix, which is 8, 2, 4. It gives me a value of 1, negative 3, 4. So now I'm going to take these values that I found for a. I found that a equaled 1, b equals negative 3, c equals 4. So now I can go ahead and plug it into my standard form for a quadratic, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Insert the 1, the negative 3, and the 4. And so that gives me an equation that looks like this. And if I simplify it, I get my equation be y equals x squared minus 3x plus 4. Now, I want to make sure that I've done everything correctly. So I go ahead and I check my ordered pair in my final equation. As you can see here, negative 1 squared minus 3 times negative 1 plus 4 does equal 8, and so on. All of those check out. So I know that I have been successful. Method 2 is being able to use quadratic regression using your CAS. We're going to do a quadratic of best fit. We did a line of best fit in Chapter 3. Now we're going to use it for quadratics. So please get out your CAS, and you'll want to do this with me. First thing you want to do is create a new document with lists and spreadsheets. I'm just going to go through the steps here, and then I'll, then I'll show you the screenshots for that. So create a list and, and spreadsheets. You're going to enter your independent and dependent variables. Then you're going to go to your home page and get a new document of data and statistics. Put those on the independent, um, the independent variables on the horizontal and the dependent on the vertical. Then you have a splat, scatter plot, and then you can go ahead and analyze your data using quadratic regression. So let's take a look at this next problem here. This problem that we're going to look at deals with ice, C 
sea ice near the North Pole during February of each given year. So what they've done is taken measurements in 1990, 2000, 2007, and found that there is 15, approximately 15.56 million square kilometers of ice near the North Pole in 1990, 15.18 in 2000 and 2007, it's 14.55. So we notice it's going down a bit each year. So we're going to create a model and then what we want to do is predict what it's going to look like or what's the quantity of ice in February of 2020. So if you follow the steps from above, the first thing we want to do is go to your home page and get a new document. We want to do lists and spreadsheets. We want to in section A or column A here, we want to put years and make sure you're doing it above the diamond line. Then B, you want to put extent and then enter your three data points. Remember you want to enter, press enter after you've put in 14.55 because if your square is around this, your calculator will not recognize that data entry. So you want to make sure your square comes down here. So you'll enter your data then you'll want to go home again and hit data and statistics. I believe that's number five. And when you when that happens you'll have your data points here and you'll want to go and get your arrow down here and click on this and you'll be able to choose which label you want to put here, years or extent, and years is my independent value so I'm going to put that on the horizontal axis and then I can go ahead and click over here on the right and get extent and then your points should fall into place and you have a nice scatter plot. So now we can go ahead and hit menu, analyze, regression, and show quadratic. And when you do that, your quadratic equation will appear. So now we can use that quadratic equation to predict what the extent of the sea ice will be in February of 2020. So input 30, because that's 2020 is 30 years from 1990, so we'll plug that in, and we get 12.58 kilometers squared. So that's not to say there will be 12.58, but we're using the model that we've created to predict what it might look like if it continues to follow the same pattern. This concludes Lesson 6.6.